Hey there, and welcome to another episode of the G Suite Dev Show. I'm your host, Wesley Chen. As you can see, we're going to talk about sending alerts and notifications in Hangouts chat, but when would you want to do this and why? You also have to ask how to do this and where you can do it from. Well, the hint is in the subtitle, but these answers and more coming up. Chances are that if you're here, you've probably already used the Hangouts chat bot framework and built bots, which take user requests and respond synchronously. Well, if not, check out the other video first, which introduces the framework and how to write bots. OK, so we get bots generally respond in a synchronous way, meaning that when someone talks to a bot in a direct message or at mentions a bot in a chat room, the Hangouts chat service forwards that message via HTTP post to your bot. Your bot does what it needs to do and sends its reply back in the HTTP response, which is then rendered in the chat room or direct message. By the way, we refer to rooms and DMs more generically as spaces. These synchronous replies correspond to user requests, but what if you need to know when a long-running background job has completed, or a train or a bus running late is arriving soon? Or perhaps you want an alert when a server has gone down or when a new customer is added to the corporate CRM. Well, these are situations where you need out-of-band messages, messages which are sent asynchronously by your bot or other notification apps. The Hangouts Chatbot framework supports asynchronous messages just for these types of use cases. Asynchronous messages can also be sent to specific threads of context. Well, more on this later. If you take a closer look at the diagram, recognize that a bot or some monitoring app is trying to send a message to a space. So it needs to initiate a connection to Hangouts Chat, meaning some level of authorization is needed. Well, Hangouts Chat will then send the notification to the requested space. There are two ways to connect to Hangouts Chat. The first is for bots, and those are service accounts. A service account is a special type of Google account that is tied to your app, in this case a bot, instead of a user. The bot assumes the identity of the service account to call the Hangouts Chat API. The second way is for non-bot apps, and that is to use incoming webhooks. This entails calling a specific URL with built-in credentials to communicate to a space. Let's tackle these one at a time. Here is a short Python script representing part of your overall bot application. Beyond the imports, this script starts with the OAuth scope for Hangouts Chat. This is the only permission needed to send a message into a space. Merge that scope along with the service account client ID of the API project to generate the credentials needed to create an API endpoint. You can then use that endpoint to send messages to a space. Now, keep in mind that this is just part of your bot. The code you don't see here is your custom workflow, like pulling information from a database, calling external APIs, or whatever processing you want to do before you send that message into the space. Anytime you see permission scopes in code, it's a pretty strong indication you're calling an API. What makes Hangouts Chat different from other Google APIs is that bots must have a service account to call the API because it's code that is never executed on behalf of a user. The Python script you just saw was an example of creating messages in a space. Now, more generally, the API can do all CRUD operations on messages, as you see from the API docs here. However, the API also has additional features to give bots more context, such as getting info on spaces or members in spaces. All right, well, that's the first asynchronous technique. Now, along with the API, Hangouts Chat also supports incoming webhooks as a convenient way of sending asynchronous messages into spaces that are not from a bot. They're great for one-off alerts like the ones I mentioned earlier, you know, server going down or a new customer in the house. All right, but it doesn't always have to be something urgent. For example, it could be used for standard or timed notifications. In other words, incoming webhooks are a quick and easy way to integrate any of your custom workflows. Now, the way you use incoming webhooks is to go to the space for which you want the webhook, pull down the selector bar at the top, then choose Configure Webhooks. You'll see the configuration dialog pop up like this one featuring one webhook. Now, you can have more than one because this room, which may get notified from different sources, right? So you click Add Webhook to add a new one, provide a webhook name and an optional avatar. Otherwise, you get the generic webhook icon. Then click Save. Then you click on the copy icon to copy that webhook into your clipboard and then use that link in your notification app. Now, these URLs are fairly long since they have built-in authorization. Keep them safe because like API keys, anyone can use them to post into that space if they were somehow exposed. Incoming webhook messages can come from a variety of sources like this Python script, which can do anything from network monitoring to CRM triggers. 
An incoming webhook doesn't even have to be code. You can even send an alert into a space with just a curl command like what you see here. Now here's a snippet of an incoming webhook I wrote for my team using AppScript and a time trigger, which is similar to a Unix cron job. This reminds them to send out their weekly TPS reports as well as submit their timesheets so they can get paid. Now, one caveat is that async messages can be numerous and disruptive when every new message spawns a new thread. Well, Hangouts Chat has an innovative feature using what are known as thread keys, which direct all async messages to the same threads, grouping related notifications together, like what you see here, and reducing the clutter. Thread keys are supported by both the API and incoming webhooks. And here's an example of its use from our curl example. All subsequent async messages sent to the same thread key go to the same conversation. See the thread keys guide in the docs for more information. Are you ready for your next steps? Well, check out the first link to read more about using the REST API. The next resource is all about incoming webhooks. And finally, we've got the Python incoming webhook quick start sample ready for you to try out. Now, what should you do with your newfound knowledge? Well, you've probably already written a bot, so add the use of the API so your bot can send messages asynchronously into a space for any of the reasons we mentioned earlier, like completion of a background job. For incoming webhooks, start the quick start and then build something on top of that to send alerts or other notifications into a relevant space, such as the weekly reminder shown earlier. Well, with this new tool under your belt, you're now ready to build bots that can send both synchronous and asynchronous messages. Not all bots can respond synchronously, and there will be situations where async is the right tool for the job. All right, be sure to subscribe to our channel and tune in to another episode soon. This is Wesley Chen from Google, and we'll see you upstairs in the G Suite.